Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Panda and I are very excited to share more stories with you. So let's get Panda out of that box. You know, I don't know why he likes to sleep in when he knows it's story time day. So let's knock on his box. Come on, Panda. Don't be a grump. Panda, come on. You're going to like the stories today. Oh, stories today? Did you forget today is story time day? And we're recording a story that the boys and girls can watch at home. <gasps> Panda, sorry, he forgot. Ah, well, Panda, what do you want? Oh, he said I didn't get out his binoculars. Silly me. Well, you can take your scarf off because it's nice and cozy warm in here, Panda. Okay. All right, take a look. What? Well, he thought maybe today would be the day he could see the boys and girls. But the day is coming, Panda, so just be glad we can at least visit them like this, okay? So let's welcome everybody who's watching us today. And actually, the good thing about when we record it is people can watch it any day they want, morning, noon, or night, and more than once if they want to. So let's welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll stretch and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, we'll have some fun. Yay, well we do have fun. Even though we can't see you, we have fun reaching out to you across the airway. So, where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, Thumpkin? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, Pointer? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is middle finger? Where is middle finger? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, middle finger? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is ring finger? Where is ring finger? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, ring finger? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is Pinky, where is Pinky? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, Pinky? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Yay! Yay! Okay. Where are the boys? Where are the boys? Stand up, boys. Stand up, boys. How are you today, boys? Oh, you're fabulous. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Stand up, girls. Stand up, girls. How are you today, girls? Wow, extra special, wonderful. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Okay, we have some books today about bears. <gasps> well, Panda Bear wants to know, why is it polar bears and not panda bears? Well, Panda, it's not about you all the time, okay? All right. Polar bears are kind of like his cousins anyway. So, 
just have a quick drink. And our first book today is called, let me put that one down, A Little Polar Bear. See, Panda? Well, his face looks a little bit like yours. Maybe kind of a family resemblance. And this is by Ariane Chote. Pure white and nestled deep down in their den of snow, Mother Polar Bear and her baby cubs were fast asleep. They snuggled together, warm and cozy under the surface of the snow. The fierce wind that blew outside couldn't reach them, but the golden rays of sunshine were starting to filter through their roof of ice. <gasps> Spring was coming. Then one day, the cubs awoke. It was time for the three cubs to take their first swim. Ernest and his two sisters leaned out over the edge of the ice. Don't be afraid, go ahead and dive in, Mother Polar Bear called out. But the three little bears hesitated each of them anxiously inspecting the murky waters. Finally, Mother Polar Bear coaxed them out. One, two, three, dive! They all bravely dove head first into the sea. Ernest, the smaller of the three polar bears, sprang right back out. He shook himself off and started to cough. The water was ice cold. It was awful, he grumbled. Is, that, is this all there is to do around here? Just swim in the freezing cold ocean? And I don't have any friends to play with. I'm bored, he added rudely. Ernest lay down on a block of ice and began to moan. Uh, he didn't notice Baby Fox, who was creeping quietly towards him. Don't be so sad, little polar bear, said Baby Fox. There are all kinds of animals here for you to play with. They're just so white that it's hard to spot them. Would you like to come with me? I'll introduce you to them. Just then a sudden sound made the two friends turn around. A pair of big black eyes were staring at them. It was a baby seal. Hi, Whitey, baby fox called out to the little seal. Don't be afraid of my friend, little polar bear. He just wants to get to know you. Look how white little baby seal is, Ernest exclaimed. That's true. But in three weeks' time, his fur coat will change to a silver color. Then he'll look just like his parents, Baby Fox said. The fox darted ahead, shouting, Come on, let's get going. We don't want to waste any time. Next, the glamorous Madam Owl, a great white owl, landed and perched herself beside the two little friends. Hello, baby fox. Hello, little polar bear. Have either of you, by chance, heard any mice scurrying along the ice? I have to feed my little fledglings, and I'm in a hurry. Well, no, we haven't, but where do you live, Ernest asked. In the far north, just like you do, but I live in the forest and build my nest in an old hollow tree," replied the stylish Madam Owl. Then she flew away without making the slightest sound. Her feathers are arranged in a special shape so that no one can hear her when she takes off, Baby Fox explained. A little further on, as little polar bear and Baby Fox made their way across the snowy white surface, they saw a long slender silhouette sliding across the ice. Just then, its adorable little triangular shaped face popped up. 
And who are you, dear little creature? Ernest asked politely. I'm Miss Ermine, the little animal replied as she moved along. I am white as snow, and I can slither like a snake. How lovely you are, little polar bear said. Well, soon after that, little polar bear sat down and let out a sigh. Ah, do we still have a long way to go, he asked. How many more white animals live nearby? Well, there's Snow Partridge, said Baby Fox. He has brown feathers in summer and white ones in winter. And there's also Polar Rabbit. His paws are so wide that he can run and not sink in the powdery snow. We've nicknamed him the Snowshoe Rabbit. Little Polar Bear and Baby Fox finally went home. Mother Polar Bear and his little sisters had already returned to the den. There they are. Hi, said Baby Fox to Little Bear's family. It's very nice to meet you. Please excuse me if I don't stay. I live over there in a smaller den with my family. I'll see you later, my friend. Goodbye for now, Little Polar Bear called out to his friend. Then he slid down the long ice corridor that led to his underground den. Mother Bear had left a nice warm spot for her mischievous son. Ernest snuggled up next to her furry coat and fell fast asleep, dreaming about all his new friends and the wonderful world he lived in. Okay, now we're gonna go over to our board for a story on our magnet board. All right, this is called Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? And this is by Eric. Well, stories by Bill Martin and pictures by Eric Carl, two of our favorites. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Lion, lion, what do you hear? Let's see if you recognize this. I hear a hippopotamus snoring in my ear. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a boa constrictor snake hissing in my ear. Boa constrictor, boa constrictor, what do you hear? I hear an, oh, what's that? Elephant trumpeting in my ear. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a Leopard snarling in my ear. Leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a walrus bellowing in my ear. Walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? What does a zookeeper hear? I hear children growling like a polar bear. 
roaring like a lion, snorting like a hippopotamus, fluting like a flamingo, braying like a zebra, hissing like a boa constrictor, trumpeting like an elephant, snarling like a leopard, yelping like a peacock, bellowing like a walrus, that's what I hear. And maybe if you have a chance to go to the zoo, you too can see Polar Bear and all his animal friends. Okay, we have time for one more story. Our last book is, Are You a Polar Bear? Well, Panda, we know you're not a polar bear. We know you're a panda bear. Just want to make sure everybody knew that. Are You a Polar Bear by Andrew Gabriel? A polar bear who had been sleeping peacefully in his quiet den. Oh, woke up from his long nap and let out a big yawn. The cub dug out from his den that was packed tight with snow. It was very quiet. No one was around. Where is everyone? Where is my mom? The cub sat outside his home and looked and thought. He tried to remember what his mommy looked like. What do I look like? He tried to recall. Though he had forgotten what his mother looked like, he set out to find her. I must be brave, he said, looking back at his den. He walked into a forest with snow-covered trees. On an old branch high above, the cub saw someone sleeping. Are you a polar bear? He asked. Young cub, I'm not a polar bear. I'm a snowy owl. The owl lifted his wing and replied. You see, I have feathers, not fur. Well, the cub moved through the forest searching for his mother. He saw a white fluffy tail wiggling on a furry bottom inside a log. Are you a polar bear? He asked. The fluffy tail turned around and popped out of the log. I'm not a polar bear. I'm an Arctic hare. I have much bigger ears than you, the hare replied. Well, outside of the forest, the cub saw someone sitting on a rock with fur and a small nose. Are you a polar bear? He asked. Little one, I'm an arctic fox. You are clever, but I have a much larger tail, and you will grow up to be much bigger than me, fox replied. Remember we saw some of these animals in our first story. The cub walked on until he saw someone sitting on an icy ridge above him. Are you a polar bear, he asked. No, I'm an arctic wolf. Your paws will grow to be much bigger than mine, but you are very brave for asking, replied the wolf. The cub moved down the ridge and onto the snowy field. Someone was chewing on a frosty bush. Are you a polar bear, he asked. The animal chewed loudly. I'm a reindeer. I have big antlers, and I don't think you eat plants, the reindeer replied. Well, the cub continued to walk until he came to a hole in the ice. A big spiral horn moved up and down. Are you a polar bear, he asked. No, I'm not. I am a narwhal. I have a long tusk, and I don't walk on land replied the narwhal. So the cub walked on until he met a very large someone lying on a mound of ice. He carefully walked forward. Are you a polar bear? He asked. No, 
oh, I am a walrus. I'm much larger than you and have very big husks. Go back home. Little cubs belong with their mothers, said the walrus. I can't go home until I find my mother, he said. He was very sad and scared because he didn't know how he was going to find her and it was getting dark. The harsh wind blew and the snow whipped at his fur. The cub could not see anything. With a loud crack, the ice broke around the cub. He held on tight as the storm pushed him out to sea. Help! The wind soon stopped and the waves calmed and the tired cub looked around. He saw a shape floating nearby. It was large, white, had fur, small ears, and a little tail. It didn't have horns or tusks. Are you a polar bear, he asked. Are you my mother, he asked. Oh, I am a polar, and I am your mother, his mom replied. Little cub, you are very special. There is no one out there quite like you. I know, he replied, as he snuggled in closer to his polar bear mom. Okay, that's the end of our stories for today. So join us again next week. Bye, boys and girls.